Of all the devices Nokia announced this year, the 3.4 seems to be the last one to finally show up. For about $150, you are getting a 6.4 inch device with 4 gigs of RAM, stock Android with 2 years of promised updates, Snapdragon 460 amongst other specifications. Just how good is the Nokia 3.4? What is up guys, welcome to the channel. The name is Easy, and today we are looking at the Nokia 2.4, a budget Android device from Nokia with interesting specifications which would like to see just how well they translate to actual performance. This currently retails for around $150 or £129 and in Naira you can pick it up for around 65 k Straight to what's in the box. As with all Nokia devices, this box needs no introduction as it's the usual. Right on the box you can see the 2 years Android upgrade stamp. And Nokia has every right to boost. Because you definitely would not get stock Android from other manufacturers at this price point. And software support up to 2 years is also pretty hard to come by around this budget category. Inside the box you pretty much find the standard items and accessories. Device first, wraps nicely. This is the Fjord color option. You also get charcoal and dusk. You get your SIM ejector too. Also some product information leaflets. Some regions will get this transparent rubber protective casing which is quite handy. You have a 10 watts charging brick and thankfully USB-C cable, followed by some basic earphones. Nothing else to see here. At this point, a sub to the channel will be amazing. During the initial setup, you might get a software update you may need to install. The Nokia 3.4 carries a similar design pattern to the Nokia 5.3 and 8.3, particularly in the camera arrangements. The cameras are arranged in a circular fashion with very slim bump which flows nicely with the design. The fingerprint scanner is placed just underneath the cameras. At a glance, the color looks just blue but it is actually a dual tone and when looked at an angle, you notice this shade of purple. Interesting stuff. It is a plastic build with a textured finish that feels really nice on the hands. It's a solidly built device. As for buttons and ports, there is a dedicated Google Assistant button to the left next to the SIM card tray. It accepts dual nano SIM cards and a micro SD card. To the right, we have the volume and power keys. A USB-C port, button firing speaker and one of dual microphones can be found at the bottom. Atop the device, you have a second mic and of course the 3.5mm headphone jack. Unlike the Nokia 2.4 and 5.3, the 3.4 has a left hole punch cutout for the selfie camera. It is an IPS LCD display with up to 400 nits of brightness. The resolution is 720p and it has a screen to body ratio of 81.9%. It is a good looking display, though it doesn't get too bright for outdoor use, but it is decent enough. One problem I noticed however with the Nokia 3.4, which was also in the Nokia 2.4, is the automatic brightness. Sometimes it is really slow to respond even when under direct bright light, and I have to resort to increasing the brightness manually. The Nokia 3.4, like other Nokia devices, is on the Android One program. Pure stock Android experience, neat, light, and bloatware free. Currently running on Android 10. Android 11 is expected in the first quarter of 2021 and you can expect up to 2 years of software upgrades. By default you get gesture navigation enabled but you can change it if you prefer 3 button navigation. The fingerprint scanner is easily reachable at the back of the device. It does however have a slight delay when unlocking, about a split second. You can also swipe down on the fingerprint sensor to pull down the notification panel. The Nokia 3.4 comes with either 3 or 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage space. You can expand it with an SD card if you need more storage. It supports the Snapdragon 460 chipset which has some really decent benchmark scores and should put up a decent performance with gaming. Aside the lightweight stock Android software, the Nokia 3.4 is quite snappy running through apps and multitasking. It also does pretty well with memory management and app retention. The device is convenient to hold but one-handed use here is not very convenient but that is not an issue. While the Snapdragon 460 at this price point is decent, the competition offers MediaTek Helio G80 which is a far more powerful processor, particularly the Redmi 9 and the Infinix Note 8i. With the Adreno 610 GPU, some smooth gaming is possible though I keep my expectations at a minimum. 
Title Slack Asphalt 9 works just fine with no lags at default settings. With PUBG Mobile, graphics setting by default is smooth and you can only go as high as medium. You can play at HD. Gameplay, however, is lag free and no heating concerns. You get 4000 mAh battery with the Nokia 3.4 and you can expect at least 6 hours of screen on time with regular use on a full charge. Charging, however, is quite slow as it does not have fast charging and you can only charge at 10 watts. One feature you might find handy on the Nokia 3.4 is multi user. You can set up guest access, maybe for your kids or if you have to give someone your device and you don't want them to have access to your applications. Also, you are able to set dark mode to turn on automatically at sunset and switch back at sunrise. I couldn't do this with the Nokia 2.4. On cameras, the Nokia 3.4 has quite a handful. There is an 8 megapixel selfie camera placed on the left side of the display. On the rear, we have triple camera setup, a 13 megapixel main sensor, a 5 megapixel ultra wide, and 2 megapixel depth sensor. The cameras take some really decent photos with good dynamic range. Colors are well represented. The ultra wide camera is just 5 megapixels, but I think it does pretty decent. It also does quite well with portrait shots. Selfies are also quite decent for a device at this price point. I could not find a working G-Cam, so I couldn't test that. Hopefully, one will be ported soon. The Nokia 3.4 is able to shoot up to full HD at 30 frames per second on both front and rear cameras. Hello. Okay, so I'm testing the cameras of the Nokia 3.4. It has an 8 megapixel selfie camera, which is capable of doing 1080p full HD videos, 30 frames per second, from both the selfie and the rear cameras. The rear cameras are triple cameras, a depth sensor, an ultra wide camera, and a 13 megapixel main camera. Let me know what you think about the quality. The Nokia 3.4 is a solidly built device and it lives quite up to expectations. Also, reasonably priced, and you also got to love getting stock Android with decent software performance at this price point. I actually like this device and I will hold on to it for a while. Is this a device I recommend? Definitely. If you are looking at one for gaming though, you might want to increase your budget and go for the Nokia 5.3. That should offer better gaming experience and overall performance. If you however want to stick with the same budget, then check out the Redmi 9 and the Infinix Note 8i. You may miss out on stock Android but you are going to get solid gaming performance with the MediaTek Helio G80 processor. If you find this video helpful, do give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't. A sub to the channel would also be appreciated. Till the next one. Peace.